Hey guys, today I am gonna talk about, from a marketing standpoint, the absolute disaster that Magic 30th was. So no one came away happy. The collectors were upset um, that these cards were, quote, being reprinted. The players were upset that the card cost $1,000. And typically speaking, when you make a product or you do a reprint, you one of these groups should be happy and one of the other groups would be upset. But it really is unique that you can make both people upset. And that's the, that's the uh, I mean, when you take a look at the marketing and what a big deal they made about it and the Brian Kibler's, Olivia's, the Hunter Pence's, the Post Malone's, right? They just gave them a secret, two secret layers you really come to the conclusion that their marketing department has no idea what they're doing. So Magic 30th anniversary should be a celebration of Magic. 30 years is a long time. Most card games don't even survive one tenth of that. And these big card games like Meadow Zoo and Flesh and Blood, I mean, they're just babies compared to Magic the Gathering. And even Pokemon celebrated the 25th anniversary. It's fantastic. Like when I look at how Pokemon did its anniversary for the 25th, which is just months ahead of the 30th anniversary for Magic. They made sure that the celebration set was widely available, that you could buy it at every Walmart and Target, that people were not stabbing each other, that they made the announcement that we are gonna print so much of this product, we're gonna make it widely available, it's cheap, you will get it for MSRP. You don't need to pay unlisted leaf $50 a pack. They made that announcement because they knew what the problem would be. It's very rare that you find two different, very different groups of people, collectors who want cards to be as expensive as possible and players who want cards to be as cheap as possible agree that this is a bad product. And it come, it, it stems down to broken promises, lies. You know, Mero's always lying about the reserve list. I mean, I don't know how that guy can even like continue to tweet on his Tumblr or whatever. At some point in time, it's the loss of trust. Both these categories of people have lost trust. And that's why from a marketing standpoint, this product would never work. On one hand, the collectors have lost trust because they feel like something that they were promised, a reserve list is being, you know, a line is being crossed. And on the other hand, the players are losing trust because they thought they want cheap dual lands, they want cheap power nine, and they, they're like, wow, if this is, you know, $1,000 a pack, or $1,000 a box with four packs in it, is that really that much cheaper? And I, there is a argument that Wizard of the Coast is making a lot of money and the so golden goose we're talking about a lot of people talking about golden gooses and you know stuff like I view this more like the way I view it is very clear because I own a store so as a store owner I view this as you know hey we have a celebration event let's reward the people who play magic today who own stores who played Magic yesterday, who play Magic and support the game. Instead, you know, you, you go on eBay, you, <laughs> you look at the prices on these things. I'm not even talking about this. I, I went on eBay the other day, tried to get Sir Angel promo, it's like $500. That doesn't feel like no celebration to me. I just want a promo from my, the anime promo for my collection. I get these secondary market value. I get serialized numbers. It, it all makes sense to me. Like I, I get all this, but at some point in time, a celebration isn't a celebration to make more money. It's like when you celebrate a, a holiday and it's really just not really celebrating anything. It's just trying to generate more money and it doesn't feel right. So the 30th anniversary should be Wizard of the Coast giving back to both collectors and players not the players and collectors giving back to Wizards of the Coast. And I think that's what they did. They did that. They did two things in marketing that were unforgivable. One, they didn't actually have a target audience for the Magic 30th. It upset both collectors and players. Again, very hard to do because it takes a very unique product to do it, something like that. Number two, the advertising and the free packs to multi-millionaires and VIPs and you know this 
is a very bad look because it essentially is saying that only these people, the people who can afford to buy $1,000 a box, we'll just give it to them for free. And the people who cannot afford to it, we'll just have those people we give it to for free advertise them. I've already gone over why influencers, in my opinion, are really bad for any game. Um, I think when they contaminate the game that way, there's not, I want it to be fair. And a fair system is all game store owners have, they don't you know, we, uh, they, there's not one dude who gets like his own promos he can sell for a thousand dollars or, you know, it's fair. We all get the same thing for around the same price and we try to build up the community. There's no point in building up a community right now when it's unfair like this. When uh, Hunter Pence is a store in Houston, how many pallets of this uh, product is he going to get for free, right? Uh, they not only gave him like, I think eight packs, like he was showing eight packs, but they also gave him like a power nine. I think it was time walk or uh, a mox. So not only did they give him packs, they also pulled him, you know, a mox or a power nine. It was definitely power nine. Is there a time walk or mox? I forget. Kai Saves Mars got the other one. So not only are they being given free boxes for free, they're being given free power nine for free, which they can print. And this is my biggest concern the same way proxy is selective enforcement it's favorism it's this idea of hey there's a group of people like post malone like and i understand you i mean everyone can understand why they want to you know make this group of people happy but it's not fair it, it is not fair as a store owner who carries magic and will continue to carry magic for the foreseeable future contracts you know I I rather carry Pokemon because Pokemon they didn't give Logan Paul a card. They didn't he had to go out and buy the cards. So for whatever you say about Pokemon, it was fair. The celebrations again was fair because it was every Target, it was every Walmart in your local game store was able to order as much as it wanted. And it, it understands this stuff. Like trust me, in the secondary market, it matters that Pokemon had made the announcement that we are going to reprint this to the ground. So don't even try to scalp it. That's how you celebrate something. You say, hey, we're going to make sure any of our Pokemon fans, they can open a, a, a Gold Star Umbreon or they can open a Dark Gyarados or a Shiny Mat, you know, just the history of Pokemon. From a marketing perspective, you cannot, I mean, you cannot, like if your marketing plan is let's give the wealthiest people in our game free packs to open, let's give some Pokemon YouTubers like Lean Heart, let's give some Yu-Gi-Oh YouTubers like Ruxin free packs to advertise. I, I don't know what went wrong with that idea, but that marketing company, as well as the people making those decisions to hire that company needs to be fired. This was supposed to be a special event, okay? Just like the 25th anniversary of Pokemon really blew Pokemon up, the 30th anniversary for Magic should have blown Magic up, but instead it made everyone angry. And that's, again, like I said, this is, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that because like, you have two different groups, collectors and players. What a collector wants is sometimes very different from what a player wants and vice versa to upset both of these major groups of people who buy into your card game on the 30th, which should be a celebration. It absolutely should not have ended in this negativity that it has ended in. And again, it's just so hard to think about. You eat, I, for the collectors, don't make the product. Boom, solved, problem solved. For the uh, players, make the product, but make it for like 100 or $50 or even $10 a a box and then just have people celebrate oh it's a proxy but you cannot make a proxy you know upset the people who have reserve list cards the collectors if you will and then upset the people who want to play the game for you know it's a foul you really you pissed off both people both parties of people which make up most of your demographic of uh your player base that's truly, I mean, a good marketer can make both people happy. A average marketer can probably make one of these groups happy. 
it takes a really awful, god awful marketer to make both groups unhappy during your birthday celebration, which is, I mean, 30 years is fantastic for a card game. I mean, it's the longest card trading card game of its type. <laughs> Guys.